Hey everyone, today we're just gonna walk through ACT math really quick, just so you know what you're getting yourself into and so that you can learn every single kind of question they could possibly ask you. Standardized testing is always about being prepared, not about intelligence, so it's really about test taking strategy. So let's get straight to it. The ACT math section is the first section that you're gonna get on the ACT and it's 60 questions in 60 minutes. So yes, it is actually a bit faster than the SAT where in the SAT you technically have 75 seconds per question where in the ACT you just have a minute. But honestly, I personally thought the ACT math was easier so it's definitely based on preference, but it is a bit quicker. Let's go through the syllabus. There are six different types of questions that you're gonna get in ACT math. And we'll solve a question for each section so you know what it's gonna look like and what's coming up for you. The first section, which is about seven to 10% of the test is just numbers. This includes real and complex numbers, matrices, rational numbers, and just number-based problems. Let's go through one of them. This is a question that was actually on the ACT math section, the official test a while ago. So let's try to solve it. The key is to finish solving the little absolute value expressions inside first. So you always go from in to out when it comes to these kinds of expressions. We have to remember this is encased in an absolute value. So anything in the absolute value becomes positive. So this is just equal to four. Now let's break this down the same exact way. Since it's in the absolute value, we get six. Four minus six, which is equal to negative two within the absolute value, which is two. So that's one of the number questions. And it's very simple once you know these definitions. The second is algebra, which is honestly what most of our classes are in high school. So this is where you solve polynomials, quadratic equations, anything where you see X or Y that is an algebraic equation. We have exponents and graphs that come under this section as well. And we see it's about 12 to 15 percent. So algebra, along with the next two sections that we're going to talk about, is actually one of the most weighted sections. Let's go through an algebra question that comes under this and also includes exponents. So the way you would solve this is just knowing that since the base is the same, the exponent has to equal the exponent over there. So essentially we get 2x plus 7 equal to 15. So here we get 2x is equal to 15 minus 7, which is equal to 8. So 2x is equal to 8 and we get x is equal to 8 divided by 2 which is four. So that's how you would solve a question like this. And if you actually take a look at these kinds of questions, if you know these rules, it's not gonna take you an entire minute to solve it. It's gonna take you like 15 seconds for some, maybe a minute for the really hard ones. The next part of the syllabus, which is just as equally weighted as algebra is functions. So this is really gonna be a plug and solve most of the time. So let's go through an example of a functions question. So over here, we are given a function and they're asking you, it's a function of X, right? So over here, they're essentially asking you f of three when they give you f of x. So we essentially replace all of the x's with the three. Five x squared minus seven, four x plus three. Now let's just replace x everywhere. We have five, three squared is nine, minus seven, three multiplied by four is 12 plus three. So now we have 44. 5 minus 7 multiplied by 15. And you're going to have a calculator, but I don't have one on me right now. So let's just multiply this out. 45 minus 105. And that's negative 60. Yeah, that's pretty much it for functions. It's usually understanding what the value you need to plug in is. And in this case, they told you it's f of three. The fourth section is one of our favorites. It is geometry, where you're really gonna have to know all of these formulas, how to calculate the circumference of a circle, the area of a circle, same goes for rectangles, and just any basic geometrical objects. And I will link a cheat sheet down below that shows you all of the formulas you're gonna have to know for ACT math. And unfortunately, they don't give you that sheet the way they do for the SAT, but I promise you looking through a sheet for formulas that are very basic formulas that you need to know is just gonna waste your time anyways. 
yeah, don't don't worry about the fact that there's no formula sheet. Just do your practice and it'll just come to you so fast. So let's go through one of the geometry questions. So in this geometry problem, we know that it's a parallelogram. So immediately we know that everything in here has to equal 360 degrees because of the parallelogram properties. So all of that's equal to 360. And what's interesting about a parallelogram is that the opposite angles are equal. So we know that B and D are both 40, as well as since CD and BA are parallel, because of that parallel nature, those angles are equal to each other. So we know that this part is 57, just like that. And it's the same for our mystery angle over here. Let's call it X. So we essentially now just have to plug everything in and solve for X. 360 minus 80 minus 114. X is equal to 166 divided by two, which is gonna be 83, which is option D. Look at how easy that was. I remember taking the ACT like a million years ago. Literally, I took it in 2014. And these are all just basic properties that you're just gonna remember forever. Let's go into the next section, which is statistics and probability. And we can see that this section is eight to 12%. So it's not as much as algebra, but you're still gonna get a significant amount of questions from it. This is all about analyzing data. So mean, median, mode, range, things like that. Anything with probability and statistics. So let's solve the statistics and probability question. So over here, we're given a list of numbers and we don't know two of them, but they do give us hints for both because it says that this list of numbers has a median of 25, but 25 isn't in here. So we know that one of these is 25 and the mode is 15. The mode is essentially the most frequent number. So we know the other one is probably 15 and we don't need to know which is which because it says to the nearest whole number, what is is the mean of the list. So the mean of the list is going to be the average. So let's just write all of that out. 41 plus 35 plus 30 plus 15 plus 25 plus 15 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is essentially the answer. So because I don't have my calculator, let's just write all of this out. where we have 161 divided by six, you could just throw it in your calculator and just round it to the nearest whole number. So you would probably get 26 point something like 26.7 or 26.8 when you put this in the calculator and you just round that up to seven. So 27 is your answer. And the answer for that is gonna be D. The next section is about, you know, it's about almost 40% of the entire test, but it's nothing different from what we had before. It's basically a mishmash of everything we've already learned. So if you remember that question we worked on where there was an exponent and that exponent had X in it, that's like essentially a mix of exponents and of a linear equation that we're trying to solve. So it's like a mix of several things in one question. So that's gonna be 40% of your test and all of that is essentially just topics you already know. The last tip I have for you today, now that we've went through the syllabus is just a quick reminder that the way you can really ace this section is just by practicing. It's not about sitting down and trying to memorize all the formulas. It's about going through every single problem over and over again. Every problem you get wrong, you need to review it. And review and practice is really what's gonna get you so far in this section. If you get anything wrong and you review why you got it wrong, you will never ever make that mistake again, which is all you want. And you learn about patterns in the questions as well. So I hope that going through the syllabus and just answering a quick question from each section kind of gives you a good idea for ACT math. I'm posting a video solving an entire math test that we could work through together. So don't forget to check that out once it's available. I'm gonna link it up there. And of course, don't forget to follow, smash that like button if you haven't already. Good luck and comment down below if there are any video ideas you have, whether it comes to the ACT or SAT. I would love to create videos that help you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this helped, good luck, and I will see you guys at my next video.